One of the ways we try and make our search ads as relevant to the user's query as possible is to include keywords in it. Sometimes that's easy to do depending on your campaign structure. You can highly customize what keywords go into your headlines or descriptions to match the search queries within that ad group. But depending on your campaign structure, it also might make sense to have that process be a little bit more automated. And that's where dynamic keyword insertion comes in. So today what I want to run through is what dynamic keyword insertion is, how you can start setting it up in your ads, and how you can customize the result so it'll fit the ad aesthetic that you're looking for. The first thing I want to do is try to illustrate how dynamic keyword insertion works. And to do that, I'm going to use an example that I've made up just for this scenario of an ad group and some keywords and then the resulting ad variants that can come out of using a standard ad and using an ad with dynamic keyword insertion. So this ad group is going to be named women's shoes because pretty relatable. And then the four bullet points below are the keywords that I have in this ad group, women's Nike shoes, women's running shoes, women's tennis shoes, and women's training. The first thing to note here is that dynamic keyword insertion, at least in my opinion, works best when you don't have ad groups that are highly granular. They're not broken out separately. For my management style, I personally would have women's Nike shoes, running shoes, all of these different variants. These would all be in different ad groups so I could feel like I had more control over the search queries, over the ad messaging that was in it, over the landing pages, all sorts of different things. But if you're one of the people that has all the keywords like this in the same ad group, dynamic keyword insertion can be a great way to make sure that your ads appear as relevant as possible. So on the right, I have an example here and you can see in the headline one, I have women's shoes. That is all encompassing of the four bullet point keywords that I have off to the left. That's about as specific as I can be because not all Nike shoes are running shoes tennis shoes and running shoes, depending on how good of a runner or tennis player you are, can be very different. And women's trainers, that can be completely different stuff as well. The women's shoes headline one is about as specific as I can get. I've then put some placeholder text below and we have an ad that matches to as many keywords as we possibly can within the ad group. But if we wanted our ads to be more specific, we can use dynamic keyword insertion for this. So let's look at a second example. Here you can see that the editor portion within the platform, I've got that up at the top again. In headline one, I have keyword insertion syntax so that I can utilize women's shoes and the ad can still appear as it did on the last slide. But I also now can match to the each individual keyword within the ad group. And now I can have an ad that has these four different ad variants available. We now have one that says women's Nike shoes, one that says women's running shoes, one with women's tennis shoes, and one with women's trainers. So dynamic keyword insertion, what it does is allows you to add in your keyword text into your ad variant so that it appears as relevant as possible to the user's keyword. And I say keyword because that's very important. One misconception people have about dynamic keyword insertion is that it's going to add in the user's search query into the ad variant, that's not true. It's only going to utilize the keyword that was triggered to show your ad. So depending on the match types that you have these individual keywords set to, women's Nike shoes could also match to women's Nike tennis shoes. There's never going to be an instance where women's Nike tennis shoes is going to show up in your H1 because that's not a keyword that you have, even though that's the search query that triggered women's Nike shoes as the keyword. It's always going to be the keyword itself, which is why they called it dynamic keyword insertion. So now we've talked a little bit about how dynamic keyword insertion works. Let's hop back into the Google ads interface and I'll show you how to set it up and a couple of ways that you can format it in different portions of your ad to make sure that it's consistent with the feel of the rest of your ad copy. Back in the Google Ads interface, I'm in the builder that I used to create the screenshots for the example on the previous slides. And I'm gonna keep using this ad just to keep things consistent throughout the entire video. Currently I have the regular text ad in place where I have a hard-coded, if you will, H1 that just says women's shoes. So let's say I wanna add in the dynamic keyword insertion that I used in the example that I had. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So coming into H1, you can just get rid of your placeholder text. And then to start with DKI, which is dynamic keyword insertion, you just have to type in an open curly brace. That opens up this menu with keyword insertion at the top, which is what we're gonna use for this video. But there's also the countdown and if functions options here as well. So if you wanna check those out, click on the link up above and you can check out those videos. So let's go ahead and click keyword insertion and it opens up a menu here and you can start to see how we're going to build our dynamic keyword insertion. The first thing to look at up here is the syntax where it says keyword, 
colon, and then default text. So that's going to be what it looks like in your ad. And you'll notice that when I chose keyword insertion, it added in keyword up here up at the top. So it's already doing some of the work for us. And everything that we adjust down here, you'll notice that it will adjust in the H1. So everything we do here is live editing into the H1 that we have for this ad variant. So the way to read this syntax is this keyword portion means we're going to use the keyword that triggered this ad, but if we cannot, for some reason, we're going to use the default text. We always have to add default text because there are going to be some scenarios where you cannot use your keyword added into your ad. The easiest example of this is going to be if you have a really long tail keyword. So let's say we wanna put a keyword in this ad headline. The character limit on this is going to be 30 characters. For whatever reason, let's say you have a keyword that is over 30 characters, that keyword will never be inserted into your headline because the keyword itself is over 30 characters, which means that it's not eligible to show up. So you're always going to be showing your default text for that. So that's what the default text is for. It's a fallback that in case for some reason you cannot use your keyword, this is the text that's going to show up. So for the example I wrote earlier, I just had women's shoes as the default text. So every time that my ad is triggered and it cannot use the keyword, it's going to show up as women's shoes. The last thing we can do in this builder before going into any other nuances of DKI is to choose the case that you want this to show up. And there are three different options, title case, sentence case, and lowercase. Each of these hopefully is relatively self-explanatory. There is an explainer here if you need a little bit of a refresh. For title case, think of the title of a book or title of a movie. The majority of the words in that title are capitalized. Only a few are going to be lowercase. So title case means that the first letter of each word is going to be capitalized. Sentence case is more like a common sentence where the first letter of the first word in the sentence will be capitalized. And then lowercase is the last option where there are no letters capitalized. So depending on where you add this keyword insertion into your ad copy, choose the right capitalization that makes sense for you. Since I'm adding this in my headline, I'm going to choose title case. And I want you to pay attention to a couple things. Pay attention right here and to the keyword up here when I change this. You'll notice that the W in word capitalized. Each time you change the case of your dynamic keyword insertion, this keyword text in the syntax and up in your headline, it won't do it right now, I guess. It'll, we'll have to wait. That's going to change to reflect what capitalization you want. In different areas of Google Ads, most specifically if you're doing something in Google Ads Editor, this window, this builder, does not show up. So you need to pay attention if you want to use dynamic keyword insertion in ads and you're writing them in Google Ads editor, make sure that you know how to write out the syntax here so that you can get the ad to show the way that you want it to. So for right now, I'm going to go ahead and click apply and you'll see that the keyword has the capitalization that I want with the K and the W capitalized. If you're going to do sentence case, only the K will be capitalized. And if you want to do all lowercase, every letter in keyword up here will not be capitalized. So it'll look something like this. As you can see, I just typed that in. I did not use that builder at all. That is also an acceptable way to do this. You don't have to use that little builder that pops up if you just want to copy and paste from an Excel sheet or if you know how you want it to be formatted, you can easily do this yourself. The next thing I wanna talk about is using DKI as part of a larger whole rather than taking up the entirety of a portion of your ad the way that I've done it with the headline one thus far. Obviously, even though I had some dynamic keyword insertion over here, I was able to add in additional text to make the headline longer. So if you want to, you can add add in more text. And let's say we wanted to have women's shoes on sale in the ad variant. I can type that in. And now the example is going to show up off to the right. Obviously, this is a terrible example because I have on sale back to back because I have it in the H2. But in case you've paid any attention to ad variants on this channel at all, I always make them ugly and they're just for sake of example. But you can see that you can use dynamic keyword insertion as part of a larger sentence. So now the headline reads women's shoes on sale as opposed to just women's shoes. This will now replace women's shoes with women's Nike shoes on sale or women's tennis shoes on sale, depending on which keyword triggers the ad to show. Like we talked about earlier with the character limits, the thing to keep in mind here is that every set of characters that you add outside of that dynamic keyword insertion takes away from the total count that you're using in the headline or description, which we'll show in a minute. And you need to make sure that you're leaving enough space so that your ads will still be able to trigger ideally with the keyword in there. Otherwise you wouldn't be using dynamic keyword insertion. 
Right now, based on a lot of the keywords that I used in the example that we looked at in PowerPoint, most of those keywords are gonna fit here because I have an extra nine characters from 21 to 30 where those could be added into the keywords. That said, if I added in holiday here, and now I say that we're having a women's shoes holiday sale, which again is not a great headline, there's only four additional characters to play with, and most of the keywords that I showed in that example are not going to be used here, and we're almost always going to use the default text in this H1 because there's just not a lot of room to work with. So when you're adding in dynamic keyword insertion and adding in additional text around that different DKI parameter, make sure that you're leaving some space so that a larger number of your keywords can show in that area without hitting the character max for that component of the ad. The last thing I wanna talk about is adding DKI into your descriptions. Up until now, we've only talked about headlines, but you can have DKI in your descriptions as well. So let's take a look at this H1. And in the same way that we had women's shoes as the default for the H1, I've also got it in the description down here. So let's say I wanted this to reflect which keyword I had in the ad copy. You would do the same thing. You can come down here, type in an open curly brace. It'll open up the same menu. You can then add in your default text. For this example, I'm going to use lowercase because I'm having this as part of a sentence and it's in quite frankly, the middle of the sentence. So I want it to be lowercase and click apply. So now we have our dynamic keyword insertion added in here. And since we have 63 of the 90 characters taken up, I feel pretty confident that all of the keywords that I showed you in my example are going to fit in here because they only have an additional, I don't know, five to six characters maybe that need to make this up. So I feel very comfortable that all those will show. The difference here for descriptions, which is something to pay attention to for headlines, but might be a little bit easier to get around. Descriptions are typically a full sentence. They make sense grammatically. They make sense because they're a complete thought all at once. All of our women's shoes are 15% off and include free shipping. If we had a different keyword in there, all of our women's Nike shoes are 15% off and include free shipping. All of that makes sense. But depending on the different keyword variants you have, you might have keywords in an order that doesn't necessarily feel as natural. Let's say instead of women's Nike shoes, you had a keyword variant that was Nike shoes women's because sometimes people search that in. They think Nike shoes is kind of the root piece and then they add women's on there just to make sure that it's kind of a little bit more specific. So if that's your keyword, the problem is if you use that during keyword insertion, all of our Nike shoes women's are 15% off and include free shipping. That doesn't really track, right? That's one of the problems when it comes to DKI is you need to make sure that whatever keyword you have in that ad group that can be triggered for this ad variant will make sense grammatically. The reader will look at it and won't be confused by what you're trying to say. Even if they realize that they typed in Nike shoes women's, it's still gonna look weird in your ad copy. So depending on which keywords you have, how they will map into your ads grammatically, maybe weigh the pros and cons of using DKI. It can be really helpful to make sure that your ads are specific to the user's query, or at least the keyword that that query triggered, because that is a way to make sure that the user is going to be in the right spot and answer their direct question effectively that they typed into Google. But if your ad is going to be confusing or ugly or just not make sense based on using that, it might make sense to have a more granular account structure approach so that you can hard code in all of your different headlines, descriptions to be very specific to the keywords that are available, but also so that they make sense and are legible from start to finish. Thanks for watching our video. If you thought it was useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you wanna get notified of when a new one comes out, be sure to subscribe to the Paid Media Pros channel.